welcome. In a post-COVID world, much has changed. How we work, how we consume, how we learn. And as we back in the coronavirus, let's talk about the issue of access to safe and hygienic food. As India crosses the grim milestone of one million coronavirus cases, this is no time to let down one's guard in terms of precautionary measures. And the one basic concern on top of everyone's mind is, can one trust the food they consume? The food we feed our loved ones, our children, our families. So we've put together a panel of food producers, packaging and processing industry players and the government. And let's ask them, how can we ensure food safety from the farm to our table? So joining us uh, tonight, I'm Inaj Alam. He's the Joint Secretary of the Ministry of Food Processing, which is a ministry that formulates and implements the policies and plans for the food processing industries within the overall national priorities and objectives. We have Inoshi Sharma, Director in charge of uh, the Eat Right campaign at the FSSAI, that's India's Food Safety Regulatory Body, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Uh, Mr. R.S. Sodhi needs uh, no introduction, really. He's the MD of Amul. And we have Ashutosh Manohar, who's the managing director of Tetra Pak of South Asia. So now, you know, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the issue of food safety is in the spotlight once again. Access to safe and hygienic food, a basic right for everyone, uh, even in the remotest areas of, for all consumers, despite challenges in the supply chain. So I want to start with Minaj Alam. Uh, Mr. Alam, you know, especially in situations like a pandemic, safety throughout the supply chain untouched by hand packaging becomes important. Are uh, India's food producers, our manufacturers, are they ready for that challenge now as we're living in a post-COVID world? Actually, our food processing industries, which we are, they, they have achieved global standards. They promote all technologies, modern technologies. There are a lot of investment in research and development going. So I see a bright future. All right, let's just try and get Mr. Uh, Alam's uh, line cleared up. Let's try and get a better line with Mr. Alam because we do uh, want to ask uh, you more questions. So let's try and get you that. So Inoshi Sharma then, um, you know, uh, at a time of a pandemic like this, food regulatory bodies will need to become even more stringent about transparency and traceability uh, of food. As the restaurant industry is bearing witness, sourcing and hygiene now is a really important criteria when choosing what to eat. How is the FSSAI uh, dealing with that? Are we going to see changes of them moving uh, with the times on that front in terms of you know the fine details that we see at the uh, at the back of our products, etc. When we pick them up at supermarkets or markets? So um, let's just start by saying that FSSAI has been um, trying to promote food safety right from the beginning. We have no scientific evidence which shows that Corona actually gets through food. Food has not been proven to be a source for um, corona to spread. So keeping that in mind, what the FSSAI is ensuring is that once we have food which is packaged or safe, it has been um, uh, you know packed properly, when it is getting transferred from one place to the other, it is the same as any other product that you are purchasing. So the infection which comes is actually from the surface of the product, hmm. not from the food inside the product. Not the contents, okay. So the, yes, so it's not the content, but it's the surface of the outside package. So the safety which has to be maintained or the precautions which have to be taken would be for any other product. Now what is important is, what FSSAI has been trying to say is that food safety and security needs to be mentioned, uh, needs to be taken care of. During Corona, it has become just more acceptable and visible among people. The kind of information that we've been trying to disseminate through the Eat Right has yeah. been with the food business operators, your um, karyana shops, your street vendors, your restaurants, even at home when you are cooking food you have to maintain safety and hygiene. So those are things that we have been trying to promote. And now with this situation, we are just grateful that everybody has become suddenly aware 
about how important it is to maintain safety and hygiene in the entire food supply chain. I think uh, I, I agree with you 100%. I think we can safely say, I hope that we can say this habit of hygiene and safe food consumption among consumers, more awareness that we're seeing among consumers is here to stay or rather certainly it's one of the rare positive fallouts uh, of this pandemic. Uh, let's go across to RS Sodhi. Mr. Sodhi, you know, this pandemic proved that the inherent strengths of the cooperative dairy industry, the resilient supply chain built by brands like Amul, that was proven. India enforced our stringent lockdown on the 25th but uh, even in the first uh, four weeks there were no reports of scarcity of dairy products or consumers being overcharged in comparison we saw essential perishables like fruits and vegetables they witnessed fluctuations in prices and availability in your opinion is there a shift post this in the consumers mindset towards packaged food because um, you, many also still consider that packaged foods in India are still a luxury of sorts well, uh, Saraji, I too 100% agree what Inushujin mentioned that uh, food is neither but definitely consumers are shifting or have already shifted more towards pack instead of buying loose. Reason is something else because pack food is more safe and you know when food is not packed and not properly stored at the right temperature, there is a growth of harmful bacteria also. Contamination of E. coli, pathogen bacteria, salmonella, which okay. reduces the immunity. Hmm. You see, during COVID, you want immunity to be highest. So because of any food, if you eat, which is carrying this harmful bacteria, which will reduce your immunity, then you are prone to more of COVID. So co food, like Inosh has mentioned, like any food, surface contamination, whether you it is packed or loose, same risk is there. But because of this, and in case of, like I am from milk, so I can tell you, milk right from milking, after milking, it is hand milk or milking machine, it is pasteurized, then packed, then stored, then handled throughout untouched by hand. Only hand which is touched when consumer is either the retailer or the consumer or who has given you. So that is the only way you have to see there is no surface contamination when you are buying any milk or milk product. All right. And uh, Ms. Uh, Ashintosh Manohar, Managing Director of Tetra Pak South Asia. Uh, Ms. Manohar, you know, food wastage due to a lack of storage facilities, a robust supply chain, that's always been a huge challenge in India. And it's perhaps a problem that's only been heightened during this pandemic. Now, we have technology. Uh, Mr. Sodhi just touched upon technology a bit, technology that adds to the life of a food product without the need for a cold storage. Because in a country like India, cold storage can also uh, be an issue. And that could be instrumental in addressing this challenge? Absolutely. Uh, the, the very, uh, 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 our, our company, Tetra Pak Stands, uh, has a vision of making food safe and available everywhere. Now, what does that mean? What it means is to be able to apply a ultra high temperature to process, for example, milk in order to extend its shelf life. Now, what happens is roughly 40% of the food that is produced in India is wasted. Imagine that. And that is roughly counting uh, about 240 crore rupees a day and during the course of this program, we would have wasted five crore rupees of worth of food. Now, our company has this ultra high temperature technology in which we heat the milk or juice or oral rehydration salt, any liquid food. We heat it to a temperature where all the bacteria are killed. Then we transport this under a septic condition and we pack it in this multi-layer packaging in an aseptic environment. And then we give that, uh, uh, give that shape and therefore the packages that you see in the market of various shapes. What it means is that from the time of production of food to the time uh, it is consumed, we extend it uh, uh, up to almost an year. 
And that is why all the farm produce, whether it is fruits or milk, fish, meat, whatever, grains, whatever that is produced will no longer be limited by its life uh, of four days or 15 days or whatever. It can be extended uh, to, to an year. And that is the technology that we have in the market for the last 35 years in India. But, uh, Inosh Sharma, I, I want to just ask you then, because there's been a, you have this campaign, Eat Right India. And before this pandemic hit, before we started talking about uh, uh, packaged foods being more safe, being more accessible, being able to reach those uh, who need it in remote areas, there was a push, a growing awareness about processed foods. What's the difference between packaged foods and processed foods? See, like if you take wheat, for instance, and you make it into flour, that's also processed food. Packaged food would be like, uh, I mean, it's just been discussed. Suppose you put it into um, packages, like suppose milk has been put into a package form in a tetra pack, or even um, for that matter, oil has been bottled or packaged. Hmm. So that would be um, your packaged food. Now, FSSCI lays out, um, you know, standards for all sorts of packaging material, which primarily ensures that if you put food in a material which is following a certain standard, then the food inside that material is safe to consume. Hmm. And that, in turn, ensures the longevity of the um, shelf life or the availability of the food for a longer period of time. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, thanks for clarifying that. I think our viewers would have keen interest in that aspect. But one of the unfortunate yeah. fallouts of the pandemic has been how uh, really we've been thrown off our sustainability goals and single-use plastics bans have taken a hit. So, Mr. Manohar, first to you. Uh, in this yeah. packaged uh, foods, uh, when we look at that, the growth of that, it's been seen as an alternative to loose food by consumers in this recent past. It's being hailed possibly for its safety standards. But what about recycling? Can uh, Tetra Pak packaging be recycled? Absolutely. I think this is one of the things uh, which is a highlight and I'm very proud of uh, working for a company that started recycling packages almost 15 years before the plastic waste management rules and solid waste management rules were promulgated by government of India. Today, we have four recycling facilities, one in Maharashtra, one in Gujarat, one in Uttarakhand, and one in Tamil Nadu. Together, we, uh, on, an, on an average in India, we have about 70,000 tons of Tetra Pak pa uh, packages which are sold in the market. And installed capacity of these four recycling packages, uh, sorry, recycling plants that we have is more than double that. So we are ready for the next few years. That is number one. Number two, for the last 15 years, we are recycling our Tetra Pak packages on our own into different products. For example, you can make roof tiles. You can make the back covers of uh, auto rickshaws. Uh, you can make a number of different products from our recycled packages. And we are very happy that the Energy and Resource Institute, the Terry Report, has recently said that we have more than 53% of the packages that we sell through various brand owners already being recycled. So first of all, the existing packages that we have today are recyclable. Hmm. Second, we also have in our R&D pipeline a number of different uh, innovations which will ensure that the today's packaging material which has a little bit of plastic and aluminum foil will also be replaced by recyclable, low carbon, recircular economy com uh, compliant materials and therefore i'm happy to say that this is the most environmentally friendly package out in the market because more mm. than 74 mm. percent of our package is actually from paper pulp which is a renewable source i so think i think that would be uh, of uh a reassurance for uh, consumers who are increasingly getting more aware and getting more concerned about the environment and the impact of our consumption on the environment. But I would, I'd like to ask you, Mr. Manohar, what does this mean? Does this mean that if I, as a consumer of a Tetra Pak package, throws it into the garbage in my home, does it automatically get recycled <laughs> or does it need to be uh, recycled in separate bins? How does it actually get back, get to a, recy uh, you know, a recycling right, Sarah. unit? Now, you have put your finger on what is the weakest link. As a, as a provider of the technology, we have recycling technology, but the problem is 
the responsibility for recycling starts at home. So you and I, as a consumer, when we start segregating waste at home, dry waste separately, organic waste separately, and then comes the role of the urban local bodies, the municipalities. Today we work with a number of NGOs, but if we work together, we bring this segregated waste into one single collection point. From that point on, us, Tetra Pak, take over. We take those packaging uh, materials, we, we bundle them, we send it to these four recycling plants that, we, and th that I spoke about. So the problem is, all of us in the entire value chain, we have to play a role. It is yeah. not just a brand owner or a technology provider. Okay, Mr. Alam, then I want to uh, ask you about the national picture, the big picture when it comes to recycling. Your ministry formulates policies within the overall national priorities and objectives of uh, the government of the country, like I said at the start. So in that, uh, in that sense, with the increased consumption of packaged foods now, what about the resulting increase in packaging waste? Our ministry, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, it promotes uh, more and more processing so because for packaged uh, uh, food we need more and more processing so for that purpose our ministry formulates policies ministry gives assistance to food processing industries ministry also gives assistance for setting up high quality food testing labs r and d and all so uh, our ministry is basically implementing all these schemes and also our ministry is uh, now uh, uh, trying to uh, formalize the informal sector because the informal sector is very important. Most of the food processing sector is the informal sector. So we need to formalize that so that right. we can improve the quality and uh, of these uh, food products. And also um, this packaging is very important uh, in this. And uh, uh, for, for particularly perishable goods, the packaging uh, materials, then R&D, that's very important. Okay, so uh, Inoshi Sharma then, you know, as per some new directions issued by the FSSAI in February, uh, you had allowed alternative packaging materials like Tetra Pak cartons, for example, for packaging water I'd read to reduce use of plastic. Do you think uh, through shifts like this, a fine balance can be struck between food safety and sustainability? Or do you think this pandemic has actually uh, you put a break to that? Have we, have we reached a bump? No, actually, we have been working to get, you know, the sustainability goals along with food safety because it's very important. You see, the first yes. priority is to ensure food safety. For instance, you cannot have contaminants in plastics uh, when, say, packaging is being done or you cannot have uh, low-grade recycled plastic or newspapers for that instance, which have carcinogenic ink for uh, packaging of food. You have to make sure at a certain level that food safety is, in, is you know, maintained. Of course, recycling can be done for other products. But with the Tetra Pak, of course, and uh, with what you've just mentioned, we've come out with the regulations in February. We are trying to you know, have this balance of sustainability and food safety. And what I feel is that with this pandemic, in fact, um, uh, you know, it's become so much more inclusive. You know? Food safety is not something which we are talking about now. But because of the focus with COVID, everybody suddenly realizes that how important it is that you have food safety. And along with that, we would, of course, ensure that sustainability is maintained. Mm. We don't want another set of, you know, um, waste Problems. products coming and affecting, yes, our environment. All right, Mr. Sodhi, then I want to ask uh, what lessons perhaps uh, we can learn uh, from the Amul experience in, uh, in this pandemic post the lockdown. What do you think the long-term implications of this COVID-19 situation now and in the future will be for food production, for agricultural supply chains and for consumer habits? What are the lessons uh, we can learn from uh, uh, food packaging yeah. that you've seen <clears throat> at Amul during this pandemic? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Faraji, you're right. During this lockdown or COVID, one thing we have seen is, whereas consumer may have reduced spending on all other things, but food per se spending has increased because people feel being uh, eating more nutritious food, you are more healthy, your immunity right. is better. So you, one is food eating, spending is more. Second shift is more towards packed food, but more packy, packed food and as well as healthy food and immunity boosting food. But no doubt, you see, when you're talking about any packed or uh, processed food, let me tell you 
whatever you say, whatever we mean, uh, that safe and other recyclable, all things are required or sustainable required. But first thing which consumer look for is the taste. When you pack or process, it has to meet the taste requirement of the consumer. Second is how to keep nutrients intact. You see, if you over process, over process it, or you do it too much other things, the nutrition get affected. Other is you have to see how to ensure with your packaging required shelf life. You see, lot of technologies are available for extending the shelf life without impacting the taste and nutrition for the western type of food. Correct. Including milk or cheese or the milk powder. But when you it comes to Indian traditional product like paneer hmm. or even our mithai like peda or barfi or gulab jamun, which you want to eat. Hmm. How to get commercial production as well as a packaging solution which can keep intact then. And other most important thing is in a food is the affordability. You see, what has happened? I've seen a lot of people are promoting pack, processed food, safe. But if you make it 100% more than the loose food or 60, who will buy it? Indian, Indian consumer segment is mainly, mainly lower middle class. Some very valid. Are very, yeah, very price conscious. Correct. So when you are packing food, you are processing food, you are adding value, you are taking all those safety mm. norms. You have to see that packed processed food is affordable. You see, if I am making dahi out of milk at a 40 rupees liter buying milk, and if I want to buy safe packed dahi, okay, I can pay 20, 30 percent more, 60 rupees more. Uh, instead of 40 rupees, 50 rupees, 55 So if you start Correct. charging because of packaging, Correct. 100 rupees. Like I said, consumer. many yeah. perhaps will consider this a luxury good and can that change? Yeah, before I end, right. Mr. Alam, I want to ask you, I think the viewers are very concerned. Perhaps in Oshi Sharma, if I have time, you can also come in. Uh, but, you know, food... Uh, and beverage adulteration, especially for dairy, it's been a notorious issue in India long before COVID-19, right? Before the outbreak came along. Should one be more concerned now about food safety and testing due to the lockdown, due to the pandemic? The lockdowns lead to restrictions. There's fewer manpower issues across the board in all industries. So uh, a closing word, uh, should viewers uh, be concerned about this or can you assuage their concerns? Well, food safety has to be a priority issue. It has to be the priority issue. And for that purpose only, we have Food Safety Standard Authority of India. They are doing, they are issuing uh, instructions and state level also entire machinery is there to uh, have uh, safe food. And also a lot of campaigns have been started for uh, making safe food. What in the food processing, we give, we support all these industries who manufacture and we provide them support so that they can provide safe food to people. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, all our guests. That's all we have time for. But we hope to every week touch upon various aspects of the fallout of this pandemic and how it affects us and the new normal that we're all living in. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Stay safe.